What's going on YouTube? Jeff coming at ya. So as you can see, the car's not at my shop anymore. It's back in the garage, which means I've been driving it. Well, a little bit. So the car's up and running. We did a whole bunch of the wiring and stuff like that. I was having some uh, overheating issues last year that I forgot about while I was uh, doing the paint and everything on this car. And lo and behold, the first day I had it out, she was running super hot and stuff. So I took a look down. I don't know if we're going to be able to zoom in here at all. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, so look at all that crud in there. Both cores, just tons of calcium deposits. Can we get a better look? Will it zoom in? Uh, not really, but you can get the gist of it. All the fins, they're all plugged up in there. Calcium, rust, crap, and stuff. So in my infinite wisdom, uh, I was on the old Google machine and typing up cheap ways to unplug your rad system and stuff and uh, a whole bunch of people. And I've done it before on my Hudson Hornet. I flushed it out with vinegar. So what I did was I put in four liters of white vinegar into there and topped the rest up with water after obviously draining the coolant system. Drained it, put four liters of vinegar in, topped the rest off with water and I let it sit for a few days while I was buttoning up everything else and stuff like that. And then I took a look inside and it was starting to look really murky like it was busting everything up and stuff and I was like okay cool that should be good. Um, and then I was reading on Google again and a whole bunch of people seemed to say that they were driving it while having the vinegar in the system and stuff and I'm like shoot that's a terrific idea let's go ahead and do that. Uh, that didn't work. Um, the vinegar was actually working so well that it started springing leaks everywhere. And even down, see it looks like it was leaking from the rad hose. I'm not too sure if it was leaking from the rad hose or if it's actually leaking from the thermostat and stuff and it started dripping all the way down here. It's not the water pump. Um, I think a whole bunch of crud. If you look at the stuff that came out of it, that's what came out. It was clear. I topped it up with fresh water and clear vinegar, ran it for a day and a half, maybe like an hour runtime. And yeah, that's what came out of it. Horrible, eh? So went on to Rock Auto. They only offer at the moment single core rads, which is highly inefficient for this thing. This thing alone being a two core is a uh, borderline. You know, a lot of people would like to put a three core in there, an aluminum jobby. Um, but I'm too broke for that. And the single core, I wasn't going to waste my money on. Uh, locally, they want $280 for the exact same rad, brand new. So at the moment, that wasn't an option. So we're going to do the cheat method one more time. We're going to try the old Rust Lime and Calcium Dollar Store CLR. And what I'm going to do is I took my fan off right there. Uh, I'm draining everything else in it again. I'm pulling the rad out this time. I'm going to tape off the connection for the lower hose and the upper hose. I'm going to throw probably a full bottle, maybe a bottle in a bit. And then I'm going to throw the kettle on and I'm going to fill it up with boiling hot water. And I'm going to let that sit for a day or two. I'm going to shake it up and stuff lots. And uh, probably ask me, well, Jeff, obviously, why bother doing that? Your rad has already sprung a leak. Well, the thing with copper rads that I really like is a DIYer or hobbyist like myself, I can repair hopefully this. So this is hopefully going to be part one of a three-part series. Uh, I'm going to get see how well the CLR works taking off all the crud in there. If I can successfully eliminate most of that, then the next step is I'm going to show you guys how to build a cheap pressure tester for under $10 to pressure test and figure out exactly where the coolant is coming from because yeah it looks really bad but it's probably just maybe one or two pinhole leaks and all that rust is just popping out of there so i'm going to show you how to make a pressure tester for under ten dollars instead of going out and buying the 160 dollar one on the jungle website or whatever 
We're going to pressure test the rad. We're going to find out where the leaks are coming from. And then part three, I'm going to show you guys um, how to solder up uh, copper and brass rads. And that's what I really like about these things. I can fix them on the fly and stuff. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get that going. So this is just part one, showing you guys the demise. In part two, I'll show you if it... Uh, if the CLR works good enough to clean and if we're going into pressure test mode after that. Hope this video finds you guys well. It's freaking hot out here. Calgary, Alberta, it's like 36 degrees Celsius. Don't know what that is in Fahrenheit for the Yankees out there. But I'm sure you guys are dealing with the same heat that we're dealing with right now. So anyways, take care. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what type of videos you guys want to see and stuff like that. I'm getting close to the hundreds subscriber mark and i promise you guys i'll be burning some tires off won't be those tires but i will be burning some tires off as soon as i hit 100 subscribers doesn't seem like a lot most youtube guys out there and stuff like that they're in the millions of views and subscribers and stuff i'm just trying to make my way through this so help a fellow out like comment share subscribe do all that stuff hit the bell button down below for some notifications i'm so impressed with how this car came out under 150 bucks. Tell me what you guys think. What do you think of the junk stang or now the trash bee? Talk to you guys soon.